What is going on, guys? Do you guys be here? And I'm bringing you guys week two of the battle. We're going, we're going up against Caesar. So actually, we're going up against the awesome Saint Caesar, coached by Caesar. So, uh, this is kind of late because uh, we just had this battle. And I'm really excited about it. So I want to record it while I was feeling like this. <laughs> so, just so you guys be aware, this is a rather very long battle, almost to cut the entire time, and uh, luckily it's going to down the time or else. <laughs> I think the guys in the TV, they, they just freak out for another battle and going down the time. But uh, going into the battle, he brought almost the exact same thing that I predicted. Uh, the only thing that caught me off guard was this campaign. Because uh, I really didn't think he would be the like of campaign to the battle, so. I had to play around with it because I don't have any way to hit it super effective, but I have ways to hit it super hard. So, this is the table that's going kind to of take like maybe already seen Garchomp and Crobat. Um, if you guys saw my team play, you already know who I'm bringing and what are their sets. But if you guys didn't watch my team play, uh, please check it out. I'll leave the, the link in the description. But uh, let's just have to do the battle. So, Looking at the team, I, I was definitely expecting a uh, red steel uh, for him to start with the racer, but he starts off with this Crobat, and uh, I don't know why he gave it to late. It actually made me kind of confused at, at the time. So uh, I just saw off my break, and uh, since he started off with this Crobat, he might be scoff as well, so I'm not about to stay in and catch a Braver and die turn 1, so I'm just going to go with my Scarlet, which my safest switch into this Crobat. And uh, he's gonna go for U-turn, does nothing, and if he gets that lucky well, helmet damage, woo! <laughs> uh, that lucky helmet actually came in hand in this battle, so he's gonna go into this Captain, which is uh, the Ready Steel. And um, these Ready Steel are not really things like he can do, he might be able to turn away, but I'm not really worried. So he's gonna go for the block on my Scarlet. I'm not really worried really, because, as I said, he can't block me, so. If he starts going for a side, it looks like he did here, it's going to be a losing war for him. So I just came in and I went for a win win. Because uh, I actually was expecting him to switch out. But um, he was even. I dragged him out into his Garchomp. And uh, if he didn't Garchomp had the focus sash, now it's gone. And uh, he shows me the sword hands. It's scary, but I was ready for it for his time. And uh, I didn't bother with it. So. I knew I could leave any one hit he had, so I just went straight for the news to get to be as much help as I can. And now since I do have my sturdy, I'm not really afraid of it, I'm just going for a little bit. He actually showed me the fire pain. I didn't expect the fire pain. I was more uh, surprised by it, but because I really thought he was going to bring it a flame throw of fire blast, but he didn't bring those. So I just went for a little bit and I dragged out his uh, scan tank and uh, here is where I start making a few stupid plays. Now, first off, I know these things can carry Fire Blast or Flame Zone, so I'm about to switch up because I don't want to die that soon. So I'm going to go to my Infernal. I can't play a bit more reckless with it because he didn't bring his Greninja as I thought before. So he's going to go for actually for a taunt with my Scarlet, but since I switch out, he's Infernal. I don't really care, so I'm gonna go for a U-turn because I thought it could carry him out with either a close combat or a fire upgrade. But this was not the case, and uh, he actually stayed in, so I'm gonna go into my Oxford. As uh, he actually goes for the default here, and uh, since normally Axers can, can uh, carry um, Earthquake, excuse me, I, I have to double out here into my Scarmon, predicting either the Clefable or the Crobat Crew. And, um, once again, he actually stays in, as uh, he once again goes for the top, I don't know if he predicted my Scarmory or not, but this was a nice play actually, that actually worked for him. So, well, what I gotta do here is, I gotta switch out, because I know he has to carry a fire move, what else? Nothing on his team can hit my Scarmory super effective apart from the Garchomp with the pack move. So he does show me fire, finally the fire block. And uh, it does nothing to my internet, but, uh, and um, what this means is that uh, he'll probably just keep on staying in, so I'm just gonna go for a flare blitz this time. And uh, he does stay in, and uh, 
Now I see why he's staying because he's actually maxed to max defense uh, scan thing. But Flatley still does enough where it will be a 3 hit KO. He goes for crunch, he doesn't do much because I do resist it. But um, Flatley's recoil plus the crunch already put me below half health. So it's kind of important. So I'm going for now Flatley and uh, I do start the burn. And this burn is really important because first. Uh, it means that I will be able to leave this crutch or at least take the win better than I need in the first place. And second is that um, this bird will take out the scan tank in this uh, range and uh, which is meaning that I won't be uh, taking unnecessary life uh, like for unnecessary flare boost from coin in my infinite. So scan tank goes down and we are uh, 65 and we will be the favor and I got some shot. Uh, I'm gonna go into my facility uh, because I can take anything that he wants to do except a toxic. I really hope he didn't even have toxic, but he has reflect actually. Which is kinda smart for my team because mostly of my attackers are physical apart from the thunderous. So he's gonna go for a reflect and he's actually gonna switch out straight out. And I did predict a switch, but I, pre I predicted a switch into his rage still because it can completely wall my Corsali. So I did go for the Thunder Wave and I actually hit it on the Chromat which is fantastic and I go for a Psychic here and um, this Chromat has a red card. At first I thought it was weakness policy and got a bit scared but since it was paralyzed for a big deal but he has red card and uh, he drags out my infinite auto wall for me. Now luckily for me he actually went for a U-turn and uh, since it's 4 times resistant I can actually take this U-turn and uh, still leave to die another day or another turn. So he's gonna U turn out once again to hit the flare and um, I saw um the play. You gotta have move blast and probably fire move. But he shows me heal bell. Which means that he said is from reflect uh heal bell moon blast and uh soft boy. So he's gonna go for the, the heal bell and him switching out here confirms it that he does not have a fire move but for some but the, he goes into his crowbar and uh i was thinking why would you bring crowbar uh i'm specially so i'm just gonna see and i'm gonna go for another roost but uh, he just brought in his crowbar to roost once again and uh why not i was doing some counts and this crowbar is actually an offensive crowbar as well or the way that he took that psychic really well not pretty really well but he took way better than i expected him and uh, him showing him Fire Fang really confirmed that this is indeed a uh, defensive kill, but I just put for myself off because since his default was campaign, I really don't expect this combat to be so back before. So he goes for U-turn over the default, which really confirmed that his logs are there to stay the entire battle. Now, he go as he goes for the U-turn, he's gonna take that lucky armor damage, which, which will put him to a low half, which means that he's in window of any of my Pokemon right now. Uh, he's going to turn out into his uh, uh, Gallade, which is going to favor, as I boost uh, once again, almost be back with you, uh, not the future, I don't have my favor. So here is where I'm thinking, okay, he's got to go for either Sorgeness or Cross Combat. So I'm going to stay in. I'm going to go for Drupal, because Drupal will hit this Gallade super hard, and he shows me bulk up, and I'm like, oh, this can be a bit problematic because if he does have Goku, it means that he has Drain Punch. And if, he dra if he does have dra Drain Punch, I think that he can hit my my team while we cover some health. And this Drain Punch that I will have because, like I said, I'm a special defensive uh, Skarmor. So uh, here I just went for the Willing as he Drain Punch. I'm glad I just went for the Willing here. And uh, I drag out the, the Garcha, which is. Ridiculous, and uh, I'm gonna go straight out into my uh, Corselli here to take the fire tank as he actually starts as us once again. So I could have probably gone for a lose there, but I didn't want to risk it. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, I know I can even one hit, even if it's an outrage, <laughs> it does a lot, it's true, but I can leave it. So I'm gonna go for a big bus to. Put this guy in range of an Apple Jet from the problem. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sack my infinite 
I'm really glad that he actually survived that huge from Robot, which means that now I can suck it off and bring me my Crodon at full health without sucking any of my wind conditions or any of my walls. So the internet goes down, of course, but he did his job. He take out, he take out, he took out the goddamn scathing and uh, it put the. Uh, and uh, gave my brother the free switch. Now, unfortunately for, for me, he got only two turns of rage, or else I would have just gone for an attack and take out that Garchomp right there. But uh, unfortunately for me, he got only a two turn and uh, he was able to suck off his uh, robot right here. Now, this one means that uh, he will bring in his Cofable once again, and uh, it's gonna be the, the delayed. I was doing some cards. I was already counting uh, max HP <laughs> Glade, so I didn't want him to get a bulk up again. For me, what I should have done was just go into my Cresselia here. So I stayed in there with my Kraven and uh, he just kills my my Chrono. So I'm going to bring in my Cofable right here. He goes for the knockoff and I don't have an item so I can leave this knockoff and go for my Moonlight. And, uh, just stay in to die another turn. <laughs> really, really important that I didn't have an item because if I had an item on me, I would be a dead Cresselia by now, and uh, I would have nothing to stop his um, his glide. So I just went for Moon Blast because I knew he was going to switch out. Probably should have gone for another Q Wave, but uh, I went for Moon Blast and it does a zero to his Veggie so it was actually I was actually laughing at the time when he his Moon Blast turn. So I know that uh, now that he can can be super effective, is not super effective, but the only super move that could hit my Skarmy R was Simon Toss. And since I was over 50 HP, I just sent him in. He actually goes for the Ice Punch, which is even better. And uh, he gets that top of damage as uh, he's just giving me an opportunity to boost with my Skarmy. Now, he sent in this uh, Garchum. I know I can leave. Thing without needing the first move from that way. So I just immediately went for the whirlwind as he brings his ready steel once again uh, on the Skarmory. And uh, now with the walls up, ready steel is below half. And uh, I'm gonna go for a whirlwind there as I bring in his gun. And I'm like, oh, this thing is gonna be a pain in the ass because at this point I'm really thinking that he has some bulk in it. So, I'm just gonna stay in and actually go for a drill pack here, predicting him to go for a straight out drill pack. But um, drill pack does nothing after a bulk up. So I'm gonna switch out into my Cofable because I know I can take a combination of a plus one drain punch plus knockoff. So he's gonna go for the drain punch. I'll, I'm actually in range of knockoff like you. But uh, he might not feel comfortable because I, he knows that I don't have an item. So luckily for me, he actually switch out here and uh, he goes into the skeptic and uh, this time I actually got a moonlight and uh, put myself in a better position with my Cresselia so I can switch in on his delay. So Cresselia is doing what I wanted her to do, which is basically wall the delay. So I'm gonna be almost full. I know he has block, so I'm not about to stay in and catch this block that's toxic and die. So I'm gonna go straight out with my Skarmory as he, he finally decides to pull up his rocks. And I'm like, actually rocks doesn't really require me too much, because Cresselia's already a good amount of health. Um, the only thing that kinda takes damage from rocks is my Thunder. So, I just did it and I went for the effect. Now, what I'm doing here is, um, I'm trying to put the red steel in range. Of my get of my uh, thunderbolt from uh, my thunders. I don't know what kind of set he is because um, I don't know. From the cards, I couldn't really see if he was defensive or special defensive. So I'm assuming at this point that he's special defensive. So he's gonna go into his cafe line to take a drill back and the setup of the deck will reflect. I'm not really worried about the reflect because I'm, at this point I'm intending to sweep with my thunder. So I'm gonna go for a real one. I drag out this uh, Mega Galade here, and uh, now I only have one switch, which is the the, the Cresselia. 
And uh, I'm gonna go for it, and uh, he's gonna go for uh, no or the two best switches. He's, he's really nice on his part. And he actually gets a good roll here, so, which means that on the first ever knockoff that he went for Micro Selling, he actually didn't get the, the roll that was necessary to take out Micro Selling. I was really happy by it, so I'm gonna stay in the middle of the block because I know I can take him on the left. And I want to pressure him to lay. So, right here, uh, I think I go for Moonlight because. I'm pretty sure that this Cruciali is good at the tip. Actually, no, I actually switch out here. I'm gonna go into my, my Skyrim. This is a part of this strong. And uh, he's, go, he's gonna go for a wish. And I'm like, ah, god damn. Uh, I was thinking, I was looking at the team and I was like, okay. He's definitely trying to flash the wish he's got up on his way, so I can't allow that. So I'm gonna go for a wish. But he actually stays in and he goes for the new one. And um, I'm going to worry and I'm like, please, any Pokemon apart from the Registeel. And he brings out the Garchomp. Now, this Garchomp was almost dead. It gets the wish, but it's much better being this Garchomp than being the Registeel. So, he's going to switch out after receiving the wish. I'm not really worried because I can take it out with uh, my Cresselia plus Thunderous so I'm gonna go for another movement because I don't want this thing to set up as it really looks playable and uh, I don't know if you guys are noticing this but this Cresselia is a magic card, it's not an aware which is which also gives me an opportunity to switch to Dancers uh, once I take out that Registry so I'm gonna keep on going for Wilmings and now I'm gonna go for a drill pack on his Megalade as he switching his uh, playable so, once again, I'm going to go for a roost, because I'm like, okay, he can do nothing to me, I might as well just be able to eat my sturdy on. So, no surprise, it happens to me. He's going to go once again for a flag, and uh, now I'm going to go for a little No. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to go for a uh, drill pack, try and stall out the reflectors, just in case I want to sweep with my Hawks and uh, he's gonna go for a wish once again. Now, here's the thing. First, first time he did this, I whirlwind it. I'm gonna whirlwind again because he's definitely trying to pass this to register now. And once again, he stays in. He's trying to get that, that wish for himself. And uh, if I can prevent that, he's in range of a sludge wave for my turn. So I will win, and I will win him out into Garcha. Which is fantastic. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is amazing. Because even if you have the focus uh you won't kill me the fire pen here and I will gonna win him out once again. And uh he's gonna get that rocky helmet damage. And uh, once he st steps in the game he's gonna take that rocky helmet that uh, stealth rock damage, so no focus ash for him, so I'm gonna go win him out into his uh, the, um the flavor which is the mega collect. It's kind of confusing me a bit. So he's gonna double out into his uh, Garchomp, which is the Fable. <laughs> As I do go for the drill pack here. So I'm just keep on going for drill packs, open drill packs, and I'm moving. I'm really glad I brought drill pack over the Brave Bird because of the coin. So we pack will uh, end up his turn, and uh, he's just gonna go for another one. I'm not really worried because at this point I'm trying to sweep. With my thunderous, so I'm gonna whirlwind, and uh, what comes out is the the red steel, and this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this red steel to come out because the only Pokemon that I can safely um, set up with my thunderous, because I know I can take a nice punch, and uh, of course, uh, Kofaro can just go for a wish and get that half back. So. I'm gonna bring in my Hawksworth and this is just gonna go for Sack because at this point I'm just sacking off my Hawksworth because it is what's what I have to do. So I'm gonna get that leftovers. Uh you might think that I'm a Goku variant. Unfortunately for me, this uh registry lived long enough where I couldn't set up my my axe. So I'm just gonna go for Dragon Claw, try and put me more in range of the Thunderbolt for my Thunder. So he's gonna go for an axe punch, I'm gonna leave this. And I get freeze. I got frozen and this was really scary. I didn't really mind actually that I got frozen. I would mind if I got frozen and he switched out to me, but luckily for me he didn't switch out here. 
which means that the next ice punch will take me out and uh, this is time for me to go into my thunders. This is the play that I have to make here. I go to my thunders, I take the stuff for damage. I know I can leave a nice punch more comfortable. I'm gonna go for the agility so I can outspeed his Gallade and his uh, Garchomp. And uh, this is all or nothing. He's gonna go for the nice punch. I'm hoping I don't get frozen twice in the way. Ice punch doesn't do much and I still have 4 hits in me. This is really important. I'm gonna go for the Thunderbolt. I take out the Registeel and uh, with Registeel gone, I have an open wound to sweep. I'm gonna get that Life Orb uh, Recoil. He's gonna go into his Fable. I know he's in range from Sludge Bomb from, uh, this, uh, from where he is. I'm gonna go for the Sludge Bomb. I'm gonna take the. Not Sludge Bomb, Sludge Bomb. I'm gonna take the Confable out. He only has the Garchomp and the, the Glade left. I'm leaving at 33 HP. So I'm taking uh, 16 damage from each life of the card. So he's gonna go into his Glade. I know he doesn't have Shadow Sleep. I'm gonna go for the Thunderbolt. I take out the Glade, so all he has left is his Garchomp. Now, is he gonna surprise me half of the actually on it? It doesn't really matter because I still have a Corsair in the back that can just go for a Moon Blast after I go into my. <coughs> Excuse me. I can just go for a, <laughs> a Moon Blast. I'm gonna go for even for Ice. I'm gonna take out the Garchomp. And as you guys saw, I, I do get a crit. I don't think the crit really mattered because he wasn't the Archibarian and he was oppressive. And as you guys see, I'm taking 16 damage from each life form, which means I'm gonna leave it exactly 1 HP with my Thunder. So this is gonna be a trio victory in our favor with the Thunderous, Scarlet, and Crescenda leaving on our hand. But it was a really, really long battle, and uh, I'm uh, actually glad I actually got to sleep with Thunders at me. Because I knew that either Haxors and Thunders, one of those, did have the potential to sweep late game against this team after one Dragon Dance or one Mission moving up. So, great game to see. He played really fantastic. Uh, he didn't let, he knew that that Registry was. Um, He's one of his only ways to stop my sweepers and he kept a thing around which was really annoying and I uh, had to, to go for drill packs and the uh, dragon claws on it to get as much cheap damage as I can play and I can just to put him in range of the thunder bolt. And the uh, luck was bleeding on one if he was just a beast of oh, that. I'm really excited because these are pushing the boundaries but uh, I can't just keep on uh, what's the word? I can't just keep on Keep happy, let's just say keep it happy. From commemorate, I can just like keep my mind on this bar because we for going up against Josh, who's undefeated, and he's been completely demolished everybody that he played so far. So, I gotta come up with something to stop this thing because this thing is really scary. But we don't have that bad man, <laughs> but uh, I'm already working on it. But this will be all for today, guys. Please check out his all his money and his YouTube channel. That's he's a really funny dude to watch, and um, I really really show show some support to this guy. He's really amazing, and um, he played a body battle. I was really lucky that uh, I could put his range in range of a turn or else that this would be a lost battle because I just couldn't sit there. And boost on the new item by Cosell until the end of the battle, just so I could get the new by time. I really hate that, so I was really happy that I could find a, an opening to sweep with my Thunders. But this will be all for today, guys. <laughs> Please leave a like, comment, subscribe with a like, and uh, I will catch you guys next time. So, peace.